to you. Many thanks for joining us. You're watching Galaxy Today, coming to you from Galaxy Television. It's the first edition for this week. My name is Justin Akadoni. Of course, it's Eric Uche Onye Kuluje. A very warm morning to you out there. Well, today is Monday, the 21st of January 2019, and we're gradually approaching the general elections for 2019. But today, we'll be looking at two things. Obasan Jerusalem att um, attack against them by his leadership, as well as emerging issues ahead general elections. Justin, may want to give us a head up. Yes, uh, uh, the former president, Lucia Gwabasanjo, again was in the news. On Sunday, he said uh, he attacked President Mohamed Buhari, accusing him of plotting to rig the general elections. I said Mr. Buhari is seeking re-election on the platform of uh, his party, APC. The presidential and national elections will hold on February 16. Okay, in an open letter titled Point for Consent and Action, which he distributed to journalists at a press conference. Uh, the former uh, president uh, said uh, right now the Buhari administration is like that of um, the Abacha era. A lot of things that he, uh, that he said uh, yesterday. Uh, he also went down to talk about um, the Independent and National Electoral Commission and how uh, he feels that they, uh, their integrity is actually uh, you know, lacking right now. But looking at all of those issues on the show, this morning, plus, uh, as Uche said, or the emerging issues. But let's take um, this um, snippet, let's take this sound bite on the former president uh, yesterday. Well, Nigeria must appreciate Buhari for the little he has done and allow him to depart for home in peace if he allows free, fair, peaceful, and credible elections. We must also tell ourselves that Nigeria deserves better at this point in time than what Buhari is capable of offering. History will note that he has been here. Nigeria now needs a man with better physical and mental soundness, with an active mind and intellect. Let me say again that Nigeria belongs to all Nigerians and exists for the benefit of all Nigerians and non-Nigerians who desire to live or do business in and with Nigeria. This administration has reached the end of its wit, even in handling all security issues, but particularly Boko Haram issue, partly due to misuse of security apparatus and poor equipment, deployment, coordination and cooperation. Finally, those Nigerians that are being intimidated or threatened by this administration must trust in God and stand firm. Tough times do not last forever, but tough people invariably survive tough times. <laughs> Alright, welcome back. It's still Galaxy today. Just to remind you that you can be a part of this discussion, feel free to interact with us on social media using the hashtag Galaxy Today. You can also be a part of this conversation by sending your questions and contributions, comments via SMS. The number will be displayed shortly. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, make welcome Barrister Stanley uh, Imaron. Uh, he is a uh, a legal practitioner. Many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. Good thanks morning. Thanks for having me. It's good to have oh, you. Okay, let us just go straight to uh, what happened yesterday. They did come to you as a surprise. Uh, first of all, I just want to get um, your original reaction when you uh, received, uh, you know, another letter by uh, the My former president, president Lucia Gobasunjo. Uh, no, that was no surprise because uh, oftentimes the former president has always sought to intervene. Mm. Na national issues like this, so okay. no surprise at all. 
Hmm. Okay, so what, what's, what's your own take on what he wrote and what he said? What's your reaction to it? Thank you very much. Uh, by virtue of section 39 of the 1999 Constitution has altered, hmm. the former president, uh, OBJ, hmm. has the constitutional right to hold his opinion okay. and, of course, to express uh, himself. I'm also, as an opposition figure, it's expected that he will join other opposition elements mm. to put the government on his toe. Okay. That precisely is what uh, he has done. Uh, we will need to look at the message and maybe uh, lead the messenger, uh, more so when we know the history of this uh, very former president, uh, Olusegun Ambassador. Mm. He, he raised the, the allegation that the present government is planning to read yes. the, the election. The election. Ideas generally must be allowed to mm. clash in the intellectual marketplace so that the best can be distilled for national good mm. and integration. He has done that by making his own point known. It behoves on the government to sit back and take his uh, narrative into consideration and respond accordingly. And I understand they have responded. Yes, they have. That, look, we do not intend to rig this election. We are not like you, as it were. Mm. Uh, we tend to ensure free and fair election. And I would be surprised if any right taking person would expect the president, the city president, to rig this election. The president has a responsibility to leave a legacy mm. behind. Yes. And for me, the uh, narrative by the president, former president, as it were, yes. is in order mm. because he has a constitutional responsibility as an opposition figure to put the government in store. And the government, of course, will have to react by ensuring that things go properly. And of course, Mr. President, we want to leave a lasting legacy, as I said earlier. Okay, but then looking at some of the things you said, now let's uh, look at them, uh, maybe one after, after the, the other. other. Let's talk about um, the Independence National Electoral Commission, which is the umpire for this um, election, the general elections, uh, which is less than um, a month from now. No, he talked about the integrity of... Um, the, the INEC, looking at what he said, uh, judging by what INEC, uh, the elections INEC has done uh, in the past, uh, last year in um, Egiti, in Ondo on State, you know, what would you say, does it really have any, uh, would I say, truth in it? Or would you say that um, the Independent National Electoral Commission is truly independent and um, is not really uh, facing any form of interference from the president? The president yeah. Thank you. By law. INEX is expected to be very independent. Mm. And politicians, you know, be who they are, who ordinarily mount pressure on INEC. And mm -hmm. we want to cut corners. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why we said what we need in this country is not ordinarily a superman, mm -hmm. but super institutions. Okay. Such that INEC will be an organization that is so insulated from political interference. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, we'll be amending our laws from time to time. Mind you, as we are making the laws, the politicians are equally looking for ways to beat the system. Mm -hmm. That is human nature for you, and it's almost like that across the world. It's not peculiar to this country. Mm. Okay, so knowing that um, that's what I mean, he wrote a whole lot that um, I feel could get a lot of people thinking. There's also another part where he said that um, the vice president, um, Professor Yemi Oshibaji, was seen in the marketplace sharing money. And uh, of course, we, from the eye of the law, for someone who is also a legal practitioner, he felt like it was a bit wrong. Now, looking at that, I don't know how true that is, but you're sitting from, uh, also from a legal perception. What can you say about that? Section 16 of the 1999 Constitution has mm -hmm. amended. Mm -hmm. My days, the government, to ensure that all Nigerians participate in the sharing of a national resource, what okay. is popularly called the national cake. Okay. In particular, to manage the economy in such a way that everybody will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about trade, trade and money. Trade and money scheme, yeah. Yes, that's exactly the point here. The government in power presently mm. is going about sharing money to market women, artisans, and those uh, perhaps below the poverty line. So are you saying that is not to influence? I'm, I'm, coming, I'm okay. coming to that. Uh, I'm only telling you, first and foremost, the responsibility of government okay. to ensure that our national cake is shared evenly. evenly. Okay. The opposition figure 
has raised serious issues around that that's geared towards manipulating the electoral process. Mm -hmm. On the face of it, on the face of it, mm -hmm. you see most of our youth these days crossing the Atlantic Ocean, traveling overseas to seek greener pastures. They will mm -hmm. tell you they would rather be in prison over there than to be free here because government from time to time give us stipends, even to the jobless. Mm -hmm. The intention is ordinarily sound. Okay. But the abuse that will come naturally, mm. more so when it is close to election, is the issue at stake. Mm. Mm. Morally, that may not be correct. Okay. Because what we should be concerned about now is do we have a data base of those who are benefiting from this okay. angle? In so far as they are not APC members or members of the ruling party, we should ordinarily welcome it. Okay. However, we've seen how uh, Shopee went, mm. and those who superintended over the Shopee, they knew how it went, and they believe that that is exactly, this is a replica, mm. as far as they are concerned, of Shopee, and they are raising the alarm. This is exactly why we say we must build strong institutions. Mm. If there are better ways to dispense this money mm. across board to those who are living below the poverty line, okay. without political mm. intention. Mm. to outdo the opposition. It's a wonderful idea. Mm. Otherwise, morally, you will say it's wrong. Okay, okay, but still, but sorry, okay. I still want us to dwell on that. Knowing that the election is just barely a month away and this came up, do you not think, in a way, is a strategy? I mean, this could have been done within the four years of reign, but why is it done now that it's just barely a few weeks to election? That's the irony of it. Uh, you discover that uh, across board, mm. not just now, uh, government tends to sit up when it's close to election. Yes. Uh, they feel that uh, perhaps Nigeria will easily forget if things are mm. done far away from uh, elections. Mm -hmm. And as such, they move it very close to the election period. Mm -hmm. One would have expected this thing to have started long ago and even continue after the election. Be that as it may. If today, in a bid, in desperation to win re election, any government, whether at the federal, state, or local government level, decides to pave all our roads, mm. decide to provide pipe bond water mm. for all of us, and of course, make uh, medical uh, health an issue, we will say, go on with it, ordinarily. That's the position. Mm. Because politicians are only interested in power, first and foremost, okay. before they begin to decide what to do with uh, power. So if the government decides to do what is expected of the government, just few months to election, pay for our roads, do all the necessary things, mm. we'll say fine. But the opposition must be on the guard because that's the role of the opposition to put the government in power. On okay, faith. the former president says the price of liberty and sustenance of our democracy is eternal vigilance and appropriate reaction to what of iniquities. He says we must all be ready to pay that price and not rely on hollow, hollow words of callousness. The derailment of Nigerian democracy will be a monumental disaster comparable to the disaster of the Nigerian forced military coup. While Nigerians must not allow such a disaster to happen nor take such an affront by lying low, the international community, uh, who played an admirable role in warning INEC, of course, to no avail on the Oshun government election and who have been warning all political parties on this occasion to give more serious warning should send more people to the field. But my question right now is that what can we really do? He says uh, we, we, should not, we should be ready to pay that price and not rely on hollow words of callousness. As an elect electorate, we are going to the poll uh, in 2019. Uh, the former president is uh, you know, talking about um, how uh, the effect of um, Abacha's um, regime is actually being brought to the fore right now. What can I do? What can Nigerians you know, do you know, as they go to poll next month? Thank you. The first, first step is for all the electorates, for those who are PVC, mm. to get ready, mm. go to the uh, police stations, cast their vote. Uh, thankfully, we have a PVC. Yes. PVC has tended to reduce the incidence of uh, corruption mm. in our electoral process. It's not a perfect uh, system. Mm. Let's not deceive uh, ourselves. Mm. But it's better than what we had uh, before. I like has the responsibility to improve on the process mm. compared to what we had in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. And Mr. President has even uh, 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 declared several that, but for PVC, he would not have uh, emerged. The mm -hmm. process was a bit 
better compared to what uh, obtained uh, before now. Uh, mm -hmm. The former president, OBJ, has started the process, mm -hmm. the process of putting the government on its toe. Mm -hmm. The international community will be watching. Okay. INEC definitely must deliver on free, fair, and credible election. As mm -hmm. to what the uh, electorate should do, mm -hmm. you cast your vote. Okay. And try as much as possible to eschew these handouts that will be given out on election day. Okay. Because politicians, being who they are, would want to buy votes. Mm -hmm. okay. We can't bury our head in the sand as us here that we are not aware of vote buying. It's a common incidence across board. Mm -hmm. And you will watch now. This is about the most austere political campaign in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. You can look at the number of adverts on the TV, radio station. Everything has reduced statically. But some have the opinion that politicians are piling up money to share on election day. Mm -hmm. So how do you check the incidence of election? How do you talk to the people not to collect money? That is the challenge we have here. We may just theorize uh, political righteousness mm -hmm. here. But the reality on ground, particularly in the rural areas, mm -hmm. where poverty literally works on the streets, people are likely to fall prey to this uh, temptation of collecting money okay. and selling their future. Okay. All right, the president is speaking through the special advisor to the president on media and publicity. Femi Adesino uh, asked the former president to tell Nigerians if elections were ever free and fair during his time in office. Uh, he spoke on a TV station yesterday and said, quote, let me start by saying that President Mohamed Gohari has abiding respect for former President Olusegun Obasanjo. You know they come from a constituency in which seniority is forever. President Obasanjo was superior to President Buhari in the military. President Buhari served under him for three and a quarter years as oil minister. So former President Obasanjo is a senior to President Buhari any day, any time, and President uh, gives him due uh, courses whenever they meet. Uh, he says, uh, talking of the statement today, I can only say that what the former president has said is his opinion of a man. There are about 196 uh, million Nigerians. If one man says anything, it is as best as his opinion. Well, he went on to say several things, you know. But what is really striking here is that um, he feels that, um, just uh, one sec, he just feels that um, everyone has the right to say what they want to say. Yeah. But let's see what Nigerians are saying right now concerning uh, this um, issue. Uh, this one says, this one from Atoba from Bingo State, he says, OBJ is a spent horse that once in a while seeks relevance. He cannot be taken seriously again. This one says, from the look of things, let us tell ourselves the truth. The president is not, <laughs> well, he cannot be insulting the president. I can't really take that. That's uh, more like a slander. Okay, the former president wants to be ruling by proxy. He was worse when he was in charge on all democratic tenets. He is attacking the leadership because he has failed to bring in his uh, pseudo party as a top contender in the elections. Let this man leave Nigeria alone. A team captain or the team coach can make all the difference between victory and loss for the team. And PDP members in APC left because training was too tough under coach Buhari. See the peace and unity now in the government and APC. Let the winning coach continue, sons and daughters of grace. So the next question will be right now, with all of this in you know, the playing out, uh, is it like a clear indication that um, the former president is actually taking joining camps with the People's Democratic Party, in your opinion? No, there's nothing hidden about that. Okay. It's very clear that uh, though he's no longer a cat carry member of the uh, opposition, mm -hmm. PDP, he's fronting for that party to see how the party can take over power from the current ruling party. So that, mm -hmm. is, not, uh, that is not news at all. That is not news. And as for what uh, the Mr. Femi uh, said about the president, yes. uh, we should take the message and ignore the messenger. Because if you look at the messenger, the person of uh, former President Olusegun mm -hmm. Ambassador, you would definitely ignore the message. Mm -hmm. You will recall that this same former president was the one who superintended over the most flawed election, okay. the worst ever election we conducted in this country. That is the 2007 uh, general election. Mm -hmm. The beneficiary of that uh, particular flawed process deprecated the election. 
and urge Nigerians to just move forward so that we can see how we can develop on uh, what we have uh, on the ground. So for me, I take the message and then we just ignore the messenger. The government should take him as such and then see how they can ensure that we have free, fair and credible election. election. You cannot just say simply because yeah. they conducted the worst election in the history of our country, whatever it says now, should just be ignored. Let's take the message and ignore the messenger. Okay, After so all, he has the right to freedom of expression and political opinion. Okay, and um, as regards INEC in preparation to 2019 election, how prepared do you think they are? Because they keep saying they're prepared, and he, the, the former president, Odushi Obasanjo, did say that INEC said we are, we are so prepared to the point where we are even ready with the results, you know, and <laughs> that felt like um, he, he pointed out like they were ready to rig for this present government. So, but from your own um, hindsight, do you think that INEC is actually prepared for the election 2019? It will be a disaster yeah. if INEC by now is not prepared for the general election of 2019. Okay. The last general election that was conducted was in 2015, a period of uh, four mm. years. Mm. If INEC is not prepared, what alternative do we have? Mm. It's only INEC that is empowered constitutionally to conduct elections <laughs> into elective uh, positions in the country. Uh, we can only give them benefit of the doubt. Until we get to that bridge, we cannot say with mathematical precision whether INEC is prepared or not. or not. But from what we have seen, we only expect that the process will get better. Okay. It has to be better. We have no option about that. And INEC must not uh, derail. Mm. That's the position. All okay. right. Uh, this one said, thanks. Good Nigerians should vote in the presence. Okay, I don't really get that. But please try and resend this question. Your question and comment so we can understand you better. Uh, good morning. My questions are what is the trading money all about? What do they want to use 10,000 for in Nigeria? Please, do we have security in Nigeria? That is from Samson. Uh, please keep all your messages and uh, your comments coming in and uh, we'll take all of that. Okay, let's talk about, uh, you know, INEC right now. You know, Uchi has said a whole lot. But the thing is, you know, the, the president of eight said the president, INEC has the right to defend themselves and um, he's sure that they would, you know, do that over time. You know, the president has alleged the, you know, lack of integrity on the part of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Right. This is not the first time we've had um, issues of, um, you know, um, INEC not being alleged the non-independence of the Independent National Electoral Commission. No, but looking at all of this happening right now, as we go to poll, you know, do you really think um, the 2019 election is going to be credible? Yeah, I think uh, the question she just raised uh, is similar to the okay. one she okay. asked before. Uh, we are not, uh, election is not a spiritual affair. <laughs> it's a physical, physical. affair. Physical. <laughs> yes. Mm. Uh, we cannot second guess okay. the fact that the election will be flawed. Mm. INEC has not complained that the necessary infrastructure has not been provided mm. in terms of money. Of course, the issue of security for INEC officials and the materials will come up maybe a few days to that uh, election. If, for whatever reason, the security needed is not provided, of course, you expect that the system will fail mm. eventually. So INEC must deliver on this uh, mission, provided the necessary ingredients to guarantee mm. free and fair election mm. are provided. We want the money to conduct the election. If there's no money, there's nothing INEC can do about it. Mm -hmm. And of course, they provide security. The integrity of the individuals mm. is another matter altogether. Mm -hmm. And you must understand how some of these persons became INEC officials. Mm. That's the issue. Uh, you see some members having some uh, sympathy for one political party or the other. Across board, it's not just for the ruling party, as it were. Mm -hmm. You recall that most of the appointees of INS were really appointed under the major opposition party. Mm -hmm. They are raising concerns about a particular candidate just now. We have done our search as a person, I've done my search, and I discovered that they actually appointed that character into INEC, but they have found out that there is a, a relationship of whatever kind between the current uh, city president and the lady in question. And they have asked that she recuse herself from 
Yes. That's six step. That is a legitimate demand on its own. Mm. And INEC will look at it and confirm that relationship. However, how, what significance would that uh, relationship mm. bring to bear on the outcome of the election? Mm. Can a single individual rig an election? Mm. If you go, if you do a dossier on each and every member of uh, that uh, commission, you will discover that some have blood relation with mm. a particular candidate contest. It could be House of Assembly. Mm. It mm -hmm. could be Senate, House of Rep, or even the governorship. Or you could also equally find out that some have serious political sympathy for one or two political uh, uh, parties. Mm. So that's the challenge. There is no perfect system, but we must keep working to ensure that mm -hmm. perfection is uh, achieved, if ever that will ever be achieved. Bear in mind the phrase, free, fair, and credible election. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can talk about a perfect election. Mm -hmm. Okay, say so that um, okay. um, from available intelligence, uh, I'm quoting the former president, we have heard of how Buhari and his party are going about his own self-succession project. They have started recruiting coalition officers who are already awarding results based on their... Uh, Okay, don't call this number. If you have um, a question, feel free to send an SMS or interact with us on social media. So they have started recruiting coalition officers who are already awarding results based on their project to actualize their perpetration agenda in which the people will not matter and the vote will not count. So it is the sole reason he has blatantly refused to sign the revised electoral reform bill into law. His henchmen are working round the clock in cahoots with security and election officials to perfect their plan by computing results right from the wards to local government, state, and national levels to allot him what will look like a landslide victory, irrespective of the true situation. All right, his scheme bears elo eloquent testimony to this road, similar to Abacha, whom he has praised to high heavens. But the question right now is that, looking at all of this, would you say there's more to meet than meets the eye in this issue of um, the president's um, non-assent to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill? Yes. Uh, now, for the refusal of the president to assent to that uh, act, we have given some reasons mm. that uh, you do not want to infringe on some uh, international uh, protocols. Okay. That uh, once you have a law to be assented to and elections are closed, mm. you cannot uh, do that and that this legislation should amend it to start effective from uh, after 2019 general uh, election. election. As an individual, I would have expected the president to sign that process. That is the, the electoral be into law. Mm. But they said they have intelligence that INEC would not give the space available, INEC will not be in a position to effectively execute the provision of that uh, proposal uh, yeah. uh, B. As I said earlier, there is no perfect system. We could have tested on it with the 2019 election, but the president chose to not to uh, assent to the B. That is the position we are today. And the opposition, of course, will not be happy naturally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they have done everything to put the government on its toe. Since that issue is already uh, dead as it is now, because there's nothing we can, we can do, we must continually, continuously mark pressure on the system okay. to ensure that free, fair, and credible election is okay. delivered. Okay. Uh, okay. That's the position. Okay, uh, let's just take one or two more comments before we move on to other issues for the day. OBJ is just wanting to be relevant. OBJ has ruled and gone. He's trying to be uh, a thing God that is not true. OBJ conducted the worst election in 2007. What he is doing now, he did to GEJ and he will fail. This time, because he is not God, he should allow PMB to rule and go. Obasanjo is a senior man in this country. Anytime he speaks, we should take him seriously. He has been there and he has seen it all. Galaxy TV have people. Uh, Okay, Galaxy TV, how people hold media chat with President Buhari, please let me know. Okay, fine. Uh, for you guys to take Obasanjo serious, it speaks uh, how serious you are on this program. Obasanjo, 
institution institutionalized uh, corruption, electoral malpractice, and he did a whole lot more. Okay, I'm Eric Anongo from Canada. The only thing I can advise politicians is that they should embrace love and peace and let our 2019 elections be free and fair. Bukola from Mukola. Buhari has done well for this country. Uh, let us allow free and fair elections for this country. Jonathan allowed it. If not, Buhari can, couldn't have had the chance to be president. Uh, God bless Nigeria. Good morning. Uh, Obasan Josh should hide his face in shame. I found out that he's just uh, uh, simply jealous of um, President Buhari. It's a galaxy today. We are uh, taking a quick break. I just keep the questions and the comments coming. When we return, we'll be looking at other uh, pertinent issues that happened over the week. The coalition of United Political Parties on Friday alleged that um, the presidency is planning on arresting the uh, CJ and Walter Onogen again on Tuesday. Plus, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, was in the news on Friday alleging, you know, fresh corruption allegations on uh, the candidate of the People's Democratic pa Party, Atiku Abu Bakr, who has gone to the United States of America uh, against all odds, and he's back. We'll look at all of, all of those issues on the show when we return to join us again. That, why I call this touch from us, that account, that money was from a particular account called Claremont account, Claremont management account, and he wants to know who owns that account. Yes, please. That we, I have fresh evidence that he was involved the meeting of the presidency cabal also resolved and directed the new acting inspector general of police that the immediate arrest of the CGN on the same Tuesday as the effort to be made to ensure he is served with the same order same day following the issuance of the arrest warrant will be his litmus test for his speedy confirmation as the substantive inspector general of police. We shout it. If you are sleeping, wake up. If you are eating, stop. If we are playing, stop. The enemies have gotten to the last bridge. And if we do not stop them now, we will lose our country. All right, welcome back. It's still Galaxy today. Before we move on to other issues, there is a question for you. I want to ask the barrister, is a national cake uh, uh, being <laughs> shared only to market women when there are thousands who have lost their jobs? And are we, and okay, I'm trying to paraphrase this, but basically he's saying that um, the 10,000 that are being shared is simply a means of rigging election because of uh, it's just a uh, channel to one particular source. He wants to ask you if this is not a clear or sheer indication of um, election rigging. Uh, the uh, money. I think we have addressed that issue. Okay. Be that me. Uh, what we have said here is, look, morally, mm. what is going on may not be correct. However, if you look at the larger picture, yes. where we have a situation whereby our youth mm. are crossing border mm. just to go and receive stipends, in foreign lands. Mm. I would prefer to do that, even if they don't have a job, than stay back uh, at home. If we have a kind of welfare system in our country mm. that is all encompassing, including this trade out money, yes. it would be fine. However, politicians, more so mm. when we have uh, elections just at the corner, mm -hmm. would twist the process to their own political advantage, just as uh, the now opposition party did with uh, the Shopee program. Okay. Uh, most of these uh, uh, games uh, were uh, learned from uh, maybe the opposition party. Okay. There's nothing ordinarily correct in trying to quote unquote buy votes mm. through trader money. We must have a national data okay. where we can point the only party has responsibility to come up with a national data to show that these are the beneficiaries, traceable, okay beneficiaries and then we can 
then say yes, you are a member of this party, you are a member of this party, you are not a member of this party. Okay. It should be general. It shouldn't be for any political party member. Okay. That's our position. Okay, mm -hmm. Atiku to be questioned when he returned, uh, returns from the U.S., according to Lai Mohammed. Well, the federal government uh, of Nigeria has said that the candidate of the opposition, PDP, uh, in the 2019 election, Atiku Abubakar, has questions to answer when he returns from his current trip to the United States. The government said it is investigating Mr. Abubakar's alleged role in the collapse of former bank PHB. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said this while briefing State House correspondent on Friday. Mr. Mohammed said the decision to question Mr. Bubaka is following fresh evidence that he benefited from slush funds that led to the collapse of Bank BHB. The government spokesperson and said the government has in its position paper trail which shows that he benefited from 156 million Naira. He went on to say that it started from an internal memo dated 13th January 2009 asking that a draft in favor of Atiku Abubakar of 100 and 56 million naira should be raised, he said. Mohammed also said another memo on the same date was raised to confirm that he, uh, that the amount was raised from a claimant management account. He said the government has proof of the account mandate, check and account statement showing Mr. Bubaka as a signatory to the account that received the money. Uh, mm. Barista, comments. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting the allegation is coming um, just now. Uh, when political season, mm -hmm. and that he could just return from uh, the United Kingdom. But they said he couldn't go to the yeah, from the United States of America. Yes. Uh, of course, the ruling party will have to keep Atiku busy with yeah. one allegation oh, or the yeah. other. So so suspected. You will recall. You will recall that a few weeks ago, Atiku's uh, can flew a kite to the fact that uh, uh, President Mohammed Buhari is a crony. And family members have bought over uh, Kisto Bank. Yes. Kisto Bank took over this same bank, PHB. Mm -hmm. And the article for further alleged that Mr. President, through Scrooney and family members, have equally taken over a particular telecommunication company. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, the challenge from the ruling party just now is that. Bank, the Kisto Bank, which took over Bank PHP, Atiku has questions to answer. So yeah. you can see, it's like a circle, yeah. uh, politicians who engage themselves, and in so doing, we expose many things to us. To the, the political interest is another matter altogether. Yeah. If there is an infraction of the law, whether an election day or a day to election, somebody can raise it. But how you make a political mileage? Out of that is another matter again altogether. Uh, for me, uh, the allegation, the timing, uh, may not even be uh, to the benefit of the ruling party. How so? Yes, uh, because uh, the ordinary people will be tempted to okay. say, he just came back from the United States of America. Okay. Uh, you will say, courtesy of uh, Ambassador International Diplomacy, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not. Now, he has surpassed that particular uh, challenge. Suddenly, you are raising this alarm. Politicians have a responsibility to keep either party. Okay, so busy. this is a way to distract either party from, um, or is it a way just to wash their dirty linen in the public? But when they fight like this, the masses benefit more. Mm. You, you can, if you have a situation where the opposition is so much in love with the ruling party, the masses will suffer. Mm. Mm. They must continuously clash. That was why I said ideas must be allowed to clash in the intellectual marketplace so that the best can be used okay. for national good. So it's, it's allowed, but politically speaking. What does this really speak uh, you know, about uh, our election and campaign? Because a lot of people have said that uh, most times uh, when uh, these election period, uh, the both uh, political parties, both the ones in power, the opposition and all of that, they hardly face issues you know, that are uh, they, they don't, you know, center their campaign on issue-based, you know, it's always about um, the marketing of the other political party or the campaign. Is this the situation we're having right now? Uh, that's the nature of politics, first and foremost. Okay. Must it uh, be like that? I, I'm mm -hmm. coming. This particular government has 
a master, anti-corruption, mm. expose corruption. So whatever opportunity they have, they want to expose corruption. For mm. the elite like us, we will say follow due process. Okay. Mm. But the Talakawas, the masses, mm. they are not, they don't understand what you mean by due process. Mm. What they are looking at, ah, this president can take on this person, take on this person is fighting corruption. The end result is not their concern. I do not think that our election is as combustible as that of the United States of America. Mm. You could see when Trump uh, contested that uh, position, all manners of things came up, several issues came up. So once you put yourself out to lead mm. uh, in public office, it. of course your life becomes an open book, mm -hmm. irrespective of the issues uh, involved. Uh, that is not to say that our election should not be issue based. Okay. If you are talking about an issue and someone is an ex it, would you say because we want to discuss how we build roads, how we take care of our keys, how we do all that, thing, any of the parties should keep mute on that particular record? No, you must expose it. It's a total package. So as they engage themselves, we take records and the, the electorate will make a informed decision. That is the nature of politics. It's not a game of the same. Okay. okay, so but saying that in the midst of all these um, schools are still on strike, I mean, us we're still on strike. Um, I'm trying to derive um, this from the statement where he said when two political parties uh, went up to open a clash or fight, right. the masses had also benefits. I'm trying to say, how are we benefiting from this? Looking at it from the angle of the students now, we're supposed to be in school reading. I mean, they are home. The question you should ask ordinarily is how has the opposition party? Mm or the opposition parties made the issue of student being at home a big political issue mm. so that they can take advantage of that position. Okay. And that's exactly why I said parties will keep themselves busy. Mm. Uh, you will say lastly, the opposition PDP may have to reject its uh, itself. They are not engaging enough. I recall I read uh, a piece by one uh, Lenin senior where he said PDP has to go back and look at how to play the role of opposition. Mm. Maybe they should play the script of APC prior to the 2050 uh, general election from one issue to the other. It was engaging. But now, PDP is not was, it's not as engaging as APC as an opposition party. That's because they ruled for how many years? And exactly. it felt like some of the issues we're dealing with now, we dealt with it during their own regime as Very well. Very well. And uh, that is a function of uh, being comfortable as a ruling party. So okay. putting on the gap of an opposition party within the past uh, three years now has been a difficult challenge uh, for the ruling uh, for the opposition party uh, PDP. Bear in mind, we have other parties in mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. but we tend to discuss just two major parties. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not helping our democracy either okay. way. Uh, maybe at times we find a way to chip in uh, conversation in relation to other parties. Okay, so let's look back at the constitution mm -hmm. now. This is just a question. Someone wants. <laughs> Over the weekend was asking, I mean, if we have age of retirement, I mean, if you're in the public service, a certain age you're expected to retire. And I want to ask, when it comes to politics, when it comes to um, um, leadership position now, is there no retirement age, particularly the seat of the presidency now? No, there's no uh, retirement age. Is it not part of the public service? It's also part of public service, is it not? Yeah, because of the nature of politics. Okay. Uh, so I will tell you that you raise an example where of uh, camera that despite the age of Mr. Former President, he's is still very high. Mm -hmm. But you probably have a situation where you have a very uh, young person mm -hmm. of our age who will not even uh, deliver mm -hmm. on any little assignment. Don't forget the so-called area boys in Lagos, Agbeos. They are young guys, they are not elderly. Mm -hmm. So the wisdom with old age is what we should ordinarily harness. Okay. The constitution is not perfect but the constitution also must not be made in such a manner as to make it so strict that a man who is 60 years old, will, maybe 65, having retired from public service, will not be able to contest for any uh, political office. That's a moral issue as it is now. Mm. That is not constitutional. There is nothing backing it uh, in law. People are asking uh, the Buhari of this world, the OBG of this world, mm. to retire from politics so that the younger ones can come up. But bear in mind that they started when they were very young. Yes. But we must equally bear in mind that power is never served a lack of Okay. You must constantly 
fight for it. Okay, let's Otherwise, talk. We'll get it. Okay, let's talk about the last issue now before we call it um, a morning. The coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, uh, CUPP, has alleged that the Minister of Transportation, uh, Chibike Amechi, and Governor of Kaduna State, Nasser El Rafai, are sponsoring the plot to arrest and remove the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Uh, Justice Water on Nogan on Tuesday, that is um, tomorrow. The opposition coalition alleged that uh, they are trying to replace him. You know, they alleged that the cabal plan to name the deputy chairman of the National Judicial Council, Justice Mohammed Tanko, as the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Want on Nogan, was arrested. CUPP also alleged that the Buhari led APC was intimidating the NJC members to move against CJN Onoren and pave way for Tanko Mohammed, vowing that the opposition would fight till the end and frustrate APC plots to annex the Supreme Court. The CUPP said the CJN can only be removed in line with Section 292 of the Constitution. All right, uh, let's look at all of this and what it portends. I don't know why. Uh, why the judiciary? Why is the judiciary being brought into, you know, the politics of election at this particular time? Plus, the the former president also mentioned that in his letter, you know, when he talked about uh, uh, how he was surprised that the vice president told uh, Nigerians that the president knew uh, of the action on Saturday night for everything that has been prepared for Monday morning. He went on to say, "Haba VP, it doesn't happen that way. So nobody should take such measure against any of the four in hierarchy below the president or any of his ministers without his knowledge and indeed his approval. Let's talk about all of this, you know, you know, the delegation by the CUPP, you know, the presidency's, um, you know, reaction sometime last when he said um, that the president wasn't really aware. You know, let's talk about all of this. Why now? Why, to, why the judiciary, really? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, the CUPP uh, allegation, the CUPP mm. is a body of opposition. Uh, yeah. part, political parties. And uh, we have a right. responsibility yes. to mm -hmm. engage government. Uh, All right. You know, let's take um, a, a breather. We'll be right back. It's still Galaxy today. Uh, we're still expecting your comments and feedbacks. Uh, just send them coming. I uh, will read them in a moment. Don't go. We'll be back in a few seconds. <laughs> Welcome back uh, before the break. Uh, the, the former president, Olusha Gopasu, just said that President Buhari and his harshet men in the coming election think that the judiciary must be primed in their favor. Hence, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter uh, Onore, has been harassed and persecuted for non declaration of his assets without following the constitution and the law. And also before the break, we told you that the CUPP is alleging that uh, there are plans to re arrest uh, Walter Onore tomorrow. Barrister Stanley, you are going to react yes. on that. Thank you very much. Uh, we are in political season. Yes. And in political seasons like this, politicians can cause elephant to fly and okay. even fresh water with baskets. Mm. So as lawyers, we have to see beyond the political shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Taking it down to the CJN uh, aspect, I have a pen elsewhere okay. that much as one is not against the fight against corruption, mm -hmm. within the judiciary, due process should be followed. And if you watch the interview granted by a ranking senior of the bar, Lenesik Robert Clark, yesterday, he said the CJN could be proceeded against. This government is out to fight corruption. 
and wherever they perceive any act of corruption, the government will definitely take step. But in so doing, what lawyers are saying generally is that in proceeding against the CJN, follow the extant law, mm. no matter how ugly or beautiful it is. There okay. is a subsisting judgment of court. Mm. The case of Ungajiwa against uh, FROM mm. that says that once there's an allegation of corruption against a sitting judge, you resort to the NJC first and foremost. The NJC is not a perfect body, but we have no option just now. Now, on the plan arrest mm. of the CGN as well by CUPP, why would they arrest him? There is a criminal charge against him already at the CCT. Okay. So I do not want to believe that they will proceed in arresting him. Arrest him for what? He's not on the run. Mm. He's not on the run, obviously. Okay. The law will take his cause. But politicians will, of course, uh, are expected to blow up a particular issue so that the government in power can be on the store. Okay. All right, uh, one final comment, Joe, just call it a day. Chief Oluchego Basinger should take a leave from ex-presidents of the United States that behave as true fathers of their beloved country. Now, Atiku is his preferred candidate. Formally said he is the worst and most corrupt Nigerian. Anybody who follows him should know that he's always having disdain for Buhari for not being his tool to manipulate. If he's a true Christian, let him tell us... Uh, he won the Southwest for PDP in his second term. Was it not manipulated? All right, uh, that's from Olushola from um, Ashi. PDP should go and campaign and don't be confused. They should play a real opposition to put APC on their foot and not Amina Zachary. All right, that's as much as we can take. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have participated uh, in this particular discourse. Let's keep the conversation flowing on social media. Remember, the hashtag to use is Galaxy Today on Facebook, Instagram, and of course on Twitter. We must say a very big thank you to our guest here in Lagos. Exactly, Legu practitioner and person of Stanley Imara. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having we do me appreciate it. And of course, for you who sat back to enjoy this show, we'll be doing it same time again tomorrow, being Tuesday, the 22nd of January. Make it a date with us. I'm Uchi Unyekoruji to have a splendid Monday. And I'm Justin Akadanyi. Many thanks for being a part of the show. We'll return again tomorrow with another interesting and topical issue. You want to join us again? Bye for now.